1980, in the aftermath of the failed Operation Eagle Claw, Richard Marsenko created the now world-famous unit called SEAL Team 6. When he was creating the newest SEAL Team, the United States and Soviet Union were locked in the Cold War, and spies were everywhere. The Navy wanted to pinpoint their areas of greatest vulnerability aiming to identify strategic points where they were most exposed. Even in spots they thought were locked up tight, they were really keen to find out if there were any sneaky ways in. So Admiral James Lyons asked Marsenko to put together a whole new team. Four years later, Red Cell came into existence when Richard Marsenko handed over control of SEAL Team 6 to Commander Robert Gormley. Marsenko established the Naval Security Coordination Team, OP-06D, commonly known as Red Cell, or Red Team, consisting of a 14-man unit. 13 were from SEAL Team 6 and one Force Recon Marine. The Red Cell members exposed the weak spots in military bases, pulling off stunts like using fake IDs, taking down fences, locking down buildings, grabbing hostages, and snatching up high-ranking officers. The name Red Cell was a term for the opposing force, Op 4, in a war game by Western nations during the Cold War a reference to the sea of red flags commonly associated with communist nations. To maximize the educational value for the base commander and verify Red Cell's penetration claims, which were occasionally disputed by base commanders, a decision was made to integrate a video crew with low-light equipment into the planning and execution of each mission. This posed a bit of a challenge, as the video crew itself needed to infiltrate the base to stay in close proximity to Red Cell. To address this issue, three former SEAL Team 6 operators were enlisted to record every operation. This approach offered a dual advantage. Not only could these individuals covertly enter military installations without compromising Red Cell's cover, but having undergone identical training as Red Cell members, they could anticipate the team's actions, ensuring better video of everything going down. In 1985, the team snuck into a base and put fake explosives on the roof of a command center, where more than a dozen admirals worked. A few weeks later, they came back, took over the home of the base commanding officer, took hostages, and did pretend attacks on planes and docked ships. Not long after, the team discovered that security hadn't gotten any better at the Navy's nuclear submarine base. So, they decided to do something about it. Red Cell members easily got into the base and casually walked onto a nuclear missile submarine during the day without any trouble. The entire operations were recorded and later presented to base personnel for examination and analysis. This approach aimed to not just embarrass the commanders, but also shed light on vulnerabilities that needed fixing. The top-ranking Navy officials insisted there's no personal grudge with the unit, highlighting that the general take was in favor of Red Cell, while also acknowledging that Marsenko has a tendency to go overboard. Red Cell team members had to keep up their SEAL qualifications in diving, parachuting, and demolition. But apart from that, they pretty much had the freedom to do their own thing. Marsenko's leadership style for physical training was like that of other elite special ops units worldwide, like the British SAS. There weren't any set workout programs forced on them. Instead, members were just expected to train on their own and stay in good shape. According to Marsenko himself, he and his unit spent a significant portion of their off-duty hours drinking and getting into fights, a tradition carried over from his time as the commander of SEAL Team 6. While this kind of behavior wasn't exclusive to Red Cell, the frequency and the various problems directly linked to drinking have often been criticized as a breakdown in discipline and leadership by officers in naval special warfare and other branches of the military. It would eventually catch up with Red Cell a few months later, worsening the unit's already tarnished disciplinary reputation in the Navy. 
It might be said that this kind of behavior was possible because Red Cell wasn't closely watched during its brief time in operation. However, this is only partly true. While the unit's actions were closely monitored during training, there was essentially no overseeing authority for the team to report to during its off-duty hours. Red Cell basically did its own thing without any rules. Admiral Lyons even came up with a thick set of guidelines to keep them in check. They also had a Navy lawyer on board to make sure everything stayed legal. Plus, Red Cell couldn't just choose any scenario and go for it. There were some limits. Admiral Lyons threw in his own cautionary note. Stray too far from the agreed path, and it's game over for them. Both the person in charge and the entire unit. These words would later turn out to be prophetic, but not before Red Cell had its time in the spotlight. On March 20th, 1986, as part of an exercise to address a base's defenses, Red Cell team members abducted Ronald D. Sheridan, a civilian security guard employed at Naval Weapons Station Seal Beach in Southern California. What happened to him was anything but typical, even for Red Cell. They brought him to a nearby hotel, where he endured 30 hours of brutal interrogation. He was pushed around, roughed up, and repeatedly submerged into a bathtub filled with water and a flushing toilet. On the surface, capturing him might look like a vulnerability, but in reality, putting this guy through pain didn't have any meaningful purpose. He started shouting, concerned about a possible broken rib, then they asked him to confirm his identity. Afterward, he was left on the bedroom floor as most of the Red Cell members left. The remaining men apologized to Sheridan, saying that it wasn't meant to go this far. Sheridan underwent a year of physical therapy, as he wasn't part of the naval personnel. He took legal action against the government by filing a $6 million lawsuit. The procedures for conducting the team's exercises were made stricter after the incident, and the team's actions were investigated. On January 24, 1990, Marsenko was found guilty of conspiring to defraud the government, leading to a 21-month imprisonment in federal prison and a fine of $10,000. Marsenko claims, however, that this was just a trick and that the government felt embarrassed about the problems Red Cell exposed in the U.S. military. Still, he served his prison time and paid the fine. Red Cell was disbanded in 1992. But let us know what you think in the comments section below. If you found this content entertaining or helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this one. And thanks for watching.